When you hear the name Imran Hashmi, even 20 years later, there's this one thing that comes to our mind. The noughties wouldn't have been Jannat if he hadn't changed the way cinema and love both were perceived back in the day. And now two decades later, he's here in our studio. Because for its showtime, for him and for all of us. Hello and welcome. You're watching our special broadcast. I'm Dipali Patel and I have with me the lovely Imran Hashmi as our guest. And today, we are going to talk about all things cinema and love with the man himself. Welcome to India today, Thank Imran. Thank you so much. You know, nice first of all, congratulations for completing 20 years. Thank How you. do you see your journey coming along? Oh, it's been quite, quite something. A lot of learning experiences. Um, and quite something for someone who is kind of an accidental actor. I never wanted to be part of the industry. So even starting off over here, it, it was a blessing. I think more than me looking out and wanting to become an actor is, is, is this profession that found me. And uh, it's just been a wonderful journey. Lots of ups and downs, uh, lots of learnings. But, you know, it's just that thing, you know, you find your passion in life. And uh, I knew after doing my first film that, you know, this is what uh, I'm meant to do. And yeah, I can't see uh, my life away from this. It, this is something I have to do. This is, uh, this is everything for me now. My acting, going out there and playing these different characters, it's, uh, it's quite something. You said that you never wanted to be an actor. I didn't. Then what, what was it that you wanted to always Oh, be? different, different. Uh, completely, <laughs> you know, I, at one point I wanted to be a pilot. I wanted to wow. get into business. I wanted to get into hotel management. I wanted to get into VFX and movies. Wow. Uh, but... All this, at, at, at that time, I think when I passed out from college, I never really figured that I would be part of the uh, film industry, uh, I would be in front of the camera. It just so happened that in two years, my life took a complete detour. I became an assistant director because I got yes. a job offer. And one thing led to the other. And then after that, I got this opportunity where they were making a film, my first film, Footpath. Yeah. And I was offered this character. And I was like, okay, it's a summer job. <laughs> let's, let's give this uh, give a give a hand. I, I thought I'll do that and I'll go off and I'll go off to another profession, but then I enjoyed it so much. I was like, okay, I'm here to stay. And if you look at uh, look at your journey, uh, you know, did you ever anticipate uh, the fame and the fanfare you got after murder? I mean, the subsequent films as well. No, I you know I really didn't get. I I didn't I didn't know what it entails. Uh, of course, I mean, when, when you're coming to the industry, all that, those are the peripheral things that are great. I mean, you, you know, uh, fame and money and all of that. Um, and I didn't even know what to expect. It's just that my first film when it released, and I, and I all keep going back to this one moment where I actually decided I want to get into this profession, was that moment where I actually got this kind of fanfare outside of theater. This yeah. my first mob experience. And I was like, this is great. I mean... You know, you end up as a performer touching these people's lives. You, uh, you don't know them, but they love you for those two hours that you've entertained them. Exactly. And I, I was like, that's a, that's, a, that's a beautiful thing. And uh, I, I wasn't expecting that. But uh, yeah, it's, it's part and parcel. It's great. You know, talking about the same fanfare. Uh, these days, a lot of films are being re-released, like Rockstar, Jump mm. We Met, and we see, see the same, uh, you know, emotions mm. in, in cinephiles. But... If there was a film that you had a choice to re-release in theatres of yours mm -hmm. from back in the day, mm -hmm. what, which film would that be? Oh, there are a whole bunch of films. I, there's no <laughs> one film. Uh, I think Jannat would be one, the one you spoke about in the beginning, because it was that quintessential romantic love, uh, story. love story. It was ex very new for its time. It, it dealt with different things, uh, with cricket and stuff. It was interesting. Great music. Mm -hmm. The music was a smash hit. And another film that at that time when it released, it didn't do that well at the box office. But when I look back and when I talk to, you know, I meet fans, it's become my most successful film, which is Awarapan. Yeah. Awarapan was something that, you know, I'm very proud of that film, proud of that performance. And I would definitely want it to release. I think it was a film way ahead of its times at that mm. time. Mm. Uh, I think it would be a good fit right now to release in theatre. And if there is a work that you regret doing <laughs> in these 20 years... <laughs> Oh, there are a couple of them. I wouldn't say that it was uh, regret. Mm. I, I, I truly believe that, you know, that I believe in fate and destiny. I think everything has a reason in your life. Films that also don't do well at the box office come and teach you something. Mm. Uh, they might be a mistake at that time, but you get wiser with those. And those are necessary for your, for your career. There's one film I keep talking about. I know it's unfair. I, I, I do, you know, it's uh, beyond a point. I don't want the makers who are associated to it also. But it's, it's a film that 
when we set out making it, it just was a different vision and a lot of things happened. That film, that was a good boy, bad boy. That was a film that, you know, mm. it just steered into, and, and I'm not blaming one particular person. I think it's just some, some films, they just steer into another direction, not intended. Everyone wants to put their best foot forward and make a good film. Of course. Sometimes things happen. We as millennials, you know, we miss the Imran Hashmi we used to watch growing up. Do you also miss that version of yours or the part of that life? I don't miss it. When I look back, it just feels like a lifetime ago. Um, yeah. I, I think every actor comes with certain phases in their career. I think that was a fantastic phase. Uh, it would be a little, it, it wouldn't be very constructive on my part to hold on to a phase because everything comes with a saturation point. Yes, it's uh, it's stood the test of time, and that you know it, it gave the audience that kind of entertainment quotient. It was very important for me to, as the years went by, to tr transit and, and and transit phase to kind of go on to other roles and different characters. Uh, because sometimes what happens that. You do too much of the same thing and people are like, yeah, we've already seen it. We don't yeah. want to see so much of it. But I think I'm ready to kind of approach those characters after a sabbatical from that and doing a different kind of cinema for almost five, six years. Mm -hmm. I would want to play that, quote unquote, the Imran Hashmi characters, which are a little rakish, rebellious, unpredictable, uh, romance, great songs. Um, yeah, and I think the audience will be very happy. I have a few uh, films in store, uh, maybe next year. Wow. Release next year, so we'll see. Well, we can't uh, wait to watch you again. Uh, but uh, you know, as an actor, what sort of hardships have you had gone through all these years, both professionally and personally, in these twenty years of your journey? You know, there, it's an industry where you see a lot of ups and downs, and I think you have to take it on the chin. Um, you can't ever expect to come in this industry without uh, times when the chips will be down, hmm. um, because like. I was telling you before the interview started, it's just that, you know, the Friday box office with your best intentions, hmm. sometimes you might make a film that you feel is great, but it's, it doesn't hit the mark with the audience. Yeah. And that has to be a learning experience. Uh, is it shattering on a Friday? It is. It's shattering and, you know, like how? Because you put in so much of work, um, a year plus in making that film and that one Friday and then people reject it. So it's, it's tough. So just the beginning uh, phase of having those failures, I think it took a toll. But then I realized I have to cope with this hmm. because if you want to be a marathon runner here, you have to, with the successes, which is great, you have to even be able to have a very level-headed approach to your failures. But how do you bounce back? What's the mantra for bouncing back? I wish I could tell you there was one particular formula or, or mantra, but it's it's just that you got to be a little bit, you know, being an actor is a, is a mixed bag of being vulnerable hmm. uh, because you're an actor, you perform. At the same time, you also have to be a little thick skinned. Yeah. So when something like that happens, you should be able to kind of brush it off uh, very fast. Otherwise, it'll take a toll. Hmm. And you just l learn how to rein it in. You just have to rein in that that fear and anxiety because everyone has insecurities it's a very very it's a profession where insecurities run really high because a lot of stuff is all about luck also mm -hmm. so you got to know how to kind of have a very sane approach towards that and having worked in the industry for so long according yeah. to you what is the dark side of the bollywood that we also talk about in the showtime but in real life what do you think according to you is the dark side of bollywood I don't know, you know, people say dark side of Bollywood, I think it's too, too heavy a word when people say dark side. Hmm. You know, like any industry, you have great people in this industry. Hmm. There are some people who are not that ethical hmm. and, you know, there are certain malpractices in our industry. But, I, I wouldn't, but, but that's true to any industry. So I think you have to be able to maneuver yourself uh, with those people. And just have that positivity in yourself um, and then things will be fine. Um, one thing that I, I, I don't think it's a dark thing, but there's, there's a time management factor in the industry. A lot of people don't function according to a disciplinary pattern of probably time or even uh, there's certain disciplines that people don't follow in the industry. So I think that needs to, that needs some work on. Yeah. Your fond memory of Ashik Banaya and why? Like something, oh, something that nobody knows. The, your fond memory <laughs> from I the set. I, 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 I've completely <laughs> forgotten about it. It's, it's like, like I said, it's a lifetime ago. But it's uh, it's a film that was 
yeah it was shocking at that time yeah. uh you know people were not and this is the thing with my films you know people kept saying okay these are bold films i don't think our industry was in the beginning even in murder release we're not ready for that kind of you know those films came with a bit of backlash but yeah. then they were tremendously successful commercially of course but i think my memory of all these films were just you know fun times we were we were doing something uh different audacious hmm. and in that it, in itself there's a risk element and also an element of fun you know what how we see you on screen is very different persona that we have uh, that we look when you're in person mm -hmm. um if you had uh, an advice for the current generation when it comes to love what would that be you know you know there's also always this thing that hamare zamane ka jo idea tha romance ka wo alag tha and we like to romanticize our own generation so i wouldn't want to in any way dictate an advice youngsters i think they're very smart i think the gen z or the millennials i think they're very smart um i think in our time i think there was more of a, a personal thing uh, there was a slow burn in relationships in the yeah. sense of it you know having its own organic right now it's it's all so fast from what i hear yeah <laughs> uh, everything with the social media and swipe tinder swipe. it's all about the swipes yeah uh, more than actually you know getting to know uh, the person uh probably 50 or 60% of your communication is online hmm. i think back in the day we had one landline phone and we were we had to meet each other yeah. so the romance is very different back in the day so again i'm not saying that that was good and this is bad it's just changing times times have changed yeah i think this is just you know probably get off social media a little bit with the communication when you're trying to find love and try to actually get on the person with you know real meetings well that's coming from imran hashmi who we have you know epitomized when it comes to love uh, on that note we are running out of time one last message for your fans uh, about your show time oh is this that the last three episodes are releasing it's the finale and for the new subscribers there'll be seven episodes to watch the uh, like you said big bad world of bollywood a lot of entertainment a lot of revelations the politics is in this industry and a fantastic story so it's releasing on the 12th of july uh the first four episodes are already available on disney plus hotstar so yeah go watch it 12th of july well thank you so much for joining us and all the best for sure thank you thank you